Our guest in this segment is Dr. Jenny Flora, and uh, it's about uh, photo biomodulation. And for that, before we go to Jenny, John Gilstrap has one wish for this segment today. John? I just thought that the segment dealing with photo biomodulation really should be part of Bill Stubblefield's <laughs> <laughs> discussion, just why he says it in French. Jenny, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me. What is photobiomodulation? Well, it's a very long word, and we'll, we'll, we'll break it down piece by piece, but basically it's light plus life equals change. Um, and it is a low-level laser therapy or red light therapy. It's non-invasive. It's non-thermal. And it is it uses low intensity light to stimulate various biological processes at a cellular level in the body. And uh, you folks do this at the Wellness Center and uh, Shepherd, and the you are the PBM Wellness Director as well, Dr. Jennifer. That is correct. Yeah. And we were introduced to well, I was introduced to PBM in uh, the winter of uh, 2022. And we were fortunate to receive a $500,000 grant from Governor Justice, who really made this possible. And there were some key stakeholders and collaborator, collaborators, uh, Dr. Don Padoff and Dr. Praveen Irani and Dr. Robert Bowen, who brought the concept to our president here at Shepherd, who then reached out more broadly. And then they brought me into the fold, and I was charged with setting up the Center of Excellence for Photobiomodulation Wellness Services at the Wellness Center. And it has been wild, and we've done over 3,000 PBM sessions across 300 clients. And uh, we just really appreciate the opportunity to provide PBM to the community at large. And our goal is to expand our offerings and applications, um, you know, with support from the community. The email you sent to me says, photobiomodulation, also known as low-level laser therapy or red light therapy, involves the use of low-level lasers or light-emitting diodes to simulate biological processes in the body at the cellular level. It has been mm -hmm. used for various uh, purposes, and the outcomes can vary based on this specific application. And then you list uh, several common uses of PBM and their potential outcomes. And I, I want to get to those in a second, but I want to first ask, how is photobiomodulation applied to a person? What specifically physically happens? Well, we have a couple different pieces of equipment. So it, basically these LEDs are built into helmets, panels, beds, uh, handheld devices, and we have them all. And so depending on what the need is, if you want to do it in the convenience of your own home, if you want global treatment, if there is a specific area of the body and you have accessibility issues, we can put you on a massage table or in a chair and put the panel over top of you. Uh, but it's a Applied, it's like a warm hug. <laughs> um, it doesn't get too hot because this type of the type of wavelength of light that we work with does not generate heat. Uh, and you can do it laying or sitting, and it takes uh, between 15 and 20 minutes, and that's it. How does this light get to affect me at the cellular level? Well, you're in your birthday suit when you are doing the treatment in a private room, or again, you can do it in your house, so light cannot penetrate through clothing. So in order to break a threshold, you have to have um, proper dosing. Uh, so you have to have just enough the, the Goldilocks level of light um, effect to get through um, these thresholds. So we work with light from 660 nanometers to 850 nanometers. And the longer, or the higher the wavelength, I should say, so the higher the number, the deeper it will penetrate. And uh, basically, we're, we're kind of like plants in a way, where we have these um, photo acceptors, specifically on an enzyme called the cytochrome C oxidase that is in the mitochondria and it absorbs light and it helps when we absorb this light um, it helps to basically ungunk the enzyme from nitric oxide that can build up and it prevents 
uh, cytochrome C oxidase from binding with oxygen, uh, which helps us to produce um, our energy currency for our cells called adenosine triphosphate. And uh, so the light helps to ungunk it, help it bind with oxygen, and then mass produce um, these energy, or I like to call them our frontline workers that go out and they heal and regenerate and just help bring our body back to homeostasis to let it heal itself. PBM is used for pain management to reduce pain associated with conditions such as musculoskeletal injuries, arthritis, and neuropathy. The outcomes can include decreased pain and improved comfort. Wound healing has been employed to accelerate wound healing, including surgical wounds, burns, and chronic ulcers. It may promote tissue regeneration and reduce healing time. PBM is used in dermatology for various skin conditions with outcomes that may include improved skin texture, reduced wrinkles, and enhanced collagen production. For hair growth, applied to... John, listen with John. me on this one. John. The <laughs> whole room, the whole room just pivoted their heads to look at me. I, I, I'm not bragging here. I'm, I'm with you. PBM is applied to stimulate hair follicles and promote hair growth in cases of hair loss or thinning. It could be used as an anti-inflammatory um, with uh, potentially reduced swelling and discomfort. Neurological conditions, ongoing research into the use of PBM for neurological conditions like traumatic brain injuries and neurodegenerative disorders. Outcomes in these cases are still being studied. And in sports performance, and it goes on to talk about Olympic athletes, NFL, NBA, uh, actors like Mark Wahlberg, Tom Cruise, Chris uh, Hemsworth in there too. So those are uh, just some of the parts that are mentioned on this. What is the evidence at this time that this works, Jenny? Well, I did send, uh, of course, our listeners aren't privy to it, but it, we could definitely publish this uh, um, database. Uh, it is a free, uh, you know, open source database uh, from Vladimir in Finland. He has been uh, collecting and summarizing a, a ton of PBM studies. So I, I think to date he has about 7,500 studies and um, review papers that are on his database. And it has a nice color coding, which I appreciate, of red, we didn't see any outcomes, yellow, um, subtle, and then green, there there was positive, um, positive outcomes uh, using PBM. So I would encourage um, for people to check that out, and I think that's something that you could share on your Facebook page, if you don't mind, uh, because this sounds like I'm, you know, selling snake oil or bringing a bag of rainbows and leprechauns to the party, which um, it is sort of like a bag of rainbows because it is light, but it, it is very real, and it, it makes sense if you think about even like our neurotransmitters in our body, how uh, serotonin works. Uh, it responds positively by sunlight. Our, you know, our circadian rhythm, um, our our sleep patterns are are dictated by light. You know, our eyes take in light, um, and it, it it sets up a a whole cascade of processes through our body. Light is not new. Uh, we've been using it as early documented as far back as the 1700s when. Healers would lay their patients out in the sun um, for wound healing or to treat tumors. And now we have come this, you know, over hundreds and hundreds of years to hone in this, specifically this red light um, to help treat conditions, disease, disorders, and even for overall health and pain management. And I think it's really cool how, you know, we, we all know what LEDs are, and I, I'm sure that you probably have them right above you, but the fact that they can make this, you know, semiconductor material, um, you know, using the periodic table, and uh, when an electrical current goes through this semiconductor material, that the outcome are these red photons. It, it's just mind-blowing that we're here, and now we can have this, device that mimics the light, that specific wavelength from the sun in our hand. John Gilster. Okay. Good morning, Dr. Flora. This is, this is fascinating stuff. When you take something, and we're talking about the, the uh, musculoskeletal um, issues, get somebody who has mm -hmm. arthritis. Does this treatment actually help with the arthritis itself, or does it just help with the managing of the pain that comes from the arthritis? Well, PBM has uh, 
anti-inflammatory, it has an anti-inflammatory effect. And uh, they think that the main mechanism is it helps to, um, it, it has, it can vasodilate, so it helps to expand um, blood vessels. And I, we, they think it's because it releases the nitric oxide that helps relax those um, um, blood vessels. Uh, and so it, it not only, it yes, so the answer is yes. Uh, it helps to both um, deal with the arthritis directly by decreasing inflammation, but it also helps with pain, um, pain uh, management. It provides uh, microcirculation, so it increases the blood flow to tissue. So uh, out with the bad and with the good nutrient-dense blood to help healing, bring down inflammation, uh, and it can help with uh, aid in tissue repair. And is it body part specific? If somebody has an arthritic foot or an arthritic hand, is it like a boot that, that goes on for the light, or is it more of a, you said that people are in their birthday suits, so now I'm thinking like a tanning mm-hmm. bed kind of, That's what it looks kind like. of thing. We, add, we do have a tanning bed-like thing, <laughs> for sure, uh, it, or a George Foreman grill. That's what it also reminds me of. So that the grease uh, drips so, off. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it smells really good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something's cooking. Uh, so we, there, there might be a boot out there, but um, for if someone wanted to treat um, arthritis in their hand or their foot or an ankle, uh, we would either, either give them the handheld device or we have a small um, panel that we would put specifically on that area. And the only thing is when you get in the bed because it's a global treatment and it's non-coherent light, so it's um, two wavelengths at once. And when you, the, the power of having two lights at once um, is lower than our smaller devices. It's still, still great. I'm not trying to discredit the bed. The bed is amazing, and it's being used by Olympic athletes, um, you know, professional athletes or special forces are Tom Cruise's of the world. Um, they have the exact same bed that we have, um, the Nova Thor bed. Uh, and it just it it has a different effect than our other devices um, when we're trying to treat a very specific area. So everything ultimately comes down to cost. Is this covered by insurance? How much does it cost, and does Medicare cover it? Currently, it is not covered by insurance, but that is being worked out right now. But our our sessions are only. $30 per session if you're a member and 35 if you're not a member of the Wellness Center, and that's pretty much a copay. So uh, it, it's very affordable, and I'm actually about to roll out some uh, some different types of formats where you can pay a, a monthly fee to get unlimited PBM. I am working on that um, right now to make it a little bit more um, cost-effective for people. <clears throat> And to clarify one last point, we talked about tanning beds. Tanning beds have a, are, are bad in terms of skin cancer, that sort of thing. That's, that's not in play here, right? Absolutely not. So um, what contributes to skin cancer is the UV light, and that is nowhere near our LEDs in our room uh, in our process. Matt Harvey. Uh, Dr. Floor, good morning. So you and I know each other. I was the one, I was the one that wanted you on here because this, I find this this um, this is fascinating. You and I have crossed paths on this because there is an application in combating the opioid a- epidemic that we have in West Virginia. Yes. And, and good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so <laughs> look, you 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 are working with the Berkeley County Day Report and the Jefferson County Day Report. Um, some of the participants in those at those um, organizations are you starting to use red light for a study. Is that correct? Yes. So we were in Jefferson Day Report first, and then we branched out to Berkeley. So we are running a study right now looking at transcranial PBM as an intervention for opioid cravings and symptoms of depression. So it has the dual purpose of treating maybe what would cause someone to turn to to drugs, which would be you know depression, or and uh, pain sensitivity. 
Right. So a PBM, uh, this therapy, of course, would be adjunctive. It, it would be a complementary. This is, this is not something that would ever take the place of the wonderful work people are doing at Jefferson and Berkeley Day Report Centers as far as standard care um, with even still some medication and, uh, you know, group and individual therapies, and those are lifelines and critical, but this is to help the process and even to be an alternative to medications as far as pain management and mood enhancing. So. Uh, most opioid use disorders involve some sort of chronic pain as a complicating factor. So PBM has been used to manage pain and reduce the need for opioids or other um, pain medications. So by reducing the pain, PBM is indirectly addressing a driver of opioid dependence and uh, it potentially, we specifically are looking at the, the dopamine pathways um, that get really messed up during uh, chronic use of opioids and that, that get all gunked up when it comes to pain relief. And then most people who have chronic pain, we've found that, and by we researchers much smarter than me, have found that it's causing depression because they're in this constant pain and there's no way out and it's now their identity. So there's a level of discontent and uh, what PBM does, it, it can have mood enhancing effects. It, it, it helps with the release of dopamine. It helps with the release of serotonin, these neurotransmitters in the body. And so the enhancing mood may help to reduce those cravings of um, opioid. And the changes in mood could be related to those neurotransmitters in the system that are being released. So if I go on the Internet and I look up red light therapy and I want to get a panel or a device for, uh, for my home, um, mm -hmm. how, do, how can I be – or if I see advertised at, at particular places at gyms and stuff that have red light therapy, how do I know that I'm getting something that's going to work? Well, I, I – my research of other gyms um, it, that have red light therapy, most is using just red light. So uh, red light is uh, in, the, in the 600s, and it, it is more superficial. So dermatologists are using this for fine lines, wrinkles, acne. Uh, it helps to uh, um, produce collagen in the body, um, which can help to uh, lead to less fine lines and wrinkles. So most gyms, and I can't say in absolute that all gyms, because some might surprise me, but I know that there's some Planet Fitnesses, not necessarily in Martinsburg, but in some other areas that have beauty boxes that are only red light. So depending on what you want, so remember the, the wavelength and the power of the device is critical when it comes to breaking thresholds. So you want to know what the wavelength is and what the power of the device is. And you really want to go through trusted vendors um, like James Carroll and Nova Thor, Tom Kerber with um, Kerber USA devices, uh, and, they're, and they're the Via Light, and there's some great companies out there. So I, I would not just go to Amazon and type in, you know, red therapy devices. A thousand will pop up, and they will have that red light uh, as far as the, the more superficial uh, surface um, penetration devices on there in, in the thousands. But I'm help, happy to help you find a home device, uh, but you want to go through someone you trust so you know that you're not just spending, you know, a couple hundred dollars or, in the bed case, a couple hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, and, and not getting a quality device that's going to have some return for you. Is there any sort of organization that accredits these devices or regulates them? So right now we, we do have, we're working with uh, KRM, uh, Keith McCall, it's actually a woman-owned business uh, in Shepherdstown. It, they, during the governor's grant, they were certifying devices. So we are uh, actively looking for more funding to, to do that, uh, to continue to certify light devices. And, but right now there is no company uh, other than the, 
the companies like Novathor are obviously have testing standards, which they are holding up true to their specs and their user manuals. I just actually had someone from um, Walter Reed come out and test the bed um, to make sure that the irradiance or, or the the power intensity is what Novothor said it is, and it hit every metric perfectly. And same thing with uh, Tom Kerber's devices. Uh, they all read exactly where they were supposed to as far as power output on the red and the near-infrared light wavelengths. Uh, so, but to go back to your question, <laughs> there uh, there is no uh, governing body who's certifying these devices, so that's why it's really important um, to go through reputable vendors instead of just purchasing one off of Amazon. Are there people for whom this therapy is not appropriate? Pacemakers, that sort of thing? Pacemakers, uh, people with um, metal, uh, you know, metal plates, there is no contraindication for use. Uh, we always recommend that if you are being treated uh, by a physician for a condition, that you should go and talk to your provider first before participating. Uh, people who are pregnant, there are no... Um, there are no long-term studies or outcomes of using it um, over the uterus, so we do not um, treat anyone who is pregnant with the global treatment. Uh, you can use it on certain body parts, but not over the uterus. And it's not because it's deemed unsafe, it's just because it's unknown, and because Previously, pregnant women were considered a vulnerable population, and um, to do research on that demographic, you had to jump through some hoops. Uh, as of late, they are no longer considered a vulnerable population, so you may we may start to see um, some studies coming out on that. And then we also don't treat anyone uh, at the Wellness Center who is actively uh, living with cancer, and it is because... Uh, many reasons. One, we there is a very specific protocol that they need to follow uh, during when they're being treated, whether it's, you know, radiation, chemotherapy, or, or, or something else. And we want them to stick to the protocol unless a physician says, hey, I want you to do this in conjunction with your current treatment. So if we do not actively recruit for those participants or advertise that we can, but if we were to have a physician say, I want them to do this um, with that approval, we would let them use the devices. Jenny, we're just about out of time, so I'll need a couple of fairly quick answers. Uh, once again, uh, this is a segment involving photobiomodulation. They do this treatment uh, at the Wellness Center at Shepherd, And Dr. Jenny Flora is the director there uh, for this particular program. Uh, Jenny, uh, first and foremost, uh, um, how many times do you generally need a treatment before it, uh, you can feel a difference? We recommend 12 treatments 12 tre consecutively, and, and two what, to three a week for three, 12. Three a week, okay. And, and how much do they cost at the Wellness Center? $30 for members, 35 for non-members. Per treatment, correct? Per treatment, yes. Right, and we good. also have a handheld device you can take home for $10 a day. All right, very good. Up until this segment, I thought uh, that red light treatment was just something I need in the morning because at 4 a.m. when I leave, there's a red light near my house that's red for no reason at all because there's no traffic coming anywhere. And it makes me angry as can be that that's not a flashing yellow light, so I have to sit there for no reason at all for like a minute until it changes. So I need kind of like mental health red light treatment on that one. Hey, uh, in all seriousness, Dr. Jenny Flora, thank you so much. We appreciate your time this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. Take care. Bye. And they have pickleball courts. Well, you got pickleball courts. You got everything. 